All right, so now that we've done the connected model, we're going to move on to the disconnected model. So the disconnected model requires an object called the data set. The data set is something we'll have to add in manually. And it requires us to right click and say add new item. And we're going to scroll down and look for something called a data set, which is right here. Now, don't hit add just yet, because by default, and I don't know why they've recently started doing this, but they've just called it dataset.xsd. Now, in other files, you notice that it's called default1, default2. So it actually increments the counter for us. But having data set here like this is not a good idea. You need to really ne rename this, this data set to something more relevant. I'm just going to call it dataset1 for lack of a better name. And the reason we're going to do that is because the base, the, the parent class of data set is data set. So if I'm trying to refer to data set here, I'm going to, I may run into a lot of issues and amb ambiguity. So it's best not to just go by its original name. It was in, in older versions of Visual, Visual Studio, like I'm thinking around 2012, 2010, I never had this issue. So it's something to watch out for when you add in data set. So I'm going to hit add. And it's going to tell me, hey, this should go into its own folder called app code. And so it's saying, do you want to move it there? So I'm going to say yes. And the nice thing about the disconnected model is that it, it really is a lot easier to work with than the connected model. And we're going to see that right here. The purpose of, just to recap, the purpose of disconnected model is that uh, it's, it's supposed to be sort of an offline approach to database transactions. So with the connected model, in, in the last exercise, we had to connect to the database, we had to run our query, we had to disconnect. So that required us to have a, data, a, a network connection to the database. Right now, we don't need that with this. Uh, what, well, the way it works is that in the disconnected model, it will, uh, it will connect and cache and, and send off data when there's a connection. If there's no connection, it sort of caches it and waits until there is a connection, and then it goes and it flushes the data when, when it can. So it's perfect for like when you go down into a subway and you, know, you have no signal and you're waiting to come back to the surface and, and, and reconnect to the outside world. So it's perfect for that so you can still continue your work. So first thing we need to do is we need to actually configure the data set here. We want to configure it to have our tables for our, uh, for our database. Now there's a tab in Visual Studio called Server Explorer. I already have mine out. Right, so there's Server Explorer. If you don't have it, you can go to View, and Server Explorer is right there. So you can add Server Explorer in. But what we need to do is create a data connection. Now, in the earlier exercise, we actually automatically created a data connection. But if you're starting fresh with a brand new Visual Studio project, you won't have any connection strings to work with. So we're kind of we're going to recycle the connection string from our our, our connected model approach. But I'm just going to expand upon it and look at what's here. All right? So there's tables. All of these folders are very familiar to what we saw in SQL Server. So it's basically just taking a snapshot of SQL Server. And in fact, our two tables are here. Now, for those of you that are missing this, you, you need to create a data connection. And if you look at the button above, there's a little plus sign. Very difficult to see, but it's there. If you hit Connect to Database, this window, which is very familiar to us, comes up. It's the same window that popped up when we tried to create our, our connection string in the last exercise for the connected model. And so we go through the same motions, look for our, our computer, set, uh, set authentication to be uh, SQL Server authentication, connect, specify database name, username, password, and so on and so on, and just hit, uh, hit OK or hit test connection and then OK. And you have, your, you have your, your connection, you'll have all these folders assuming that you are properly connected. I'm going to hit cancel because we already have this available to us. So the nice thing about disconnected models is that we have here flight info and user info, and it's already ready to go. All I have to do is just drag. So I'm just going to drag it over to data set, and it's bringing it over. It's brought over all of my, my information for that table. I'm going to do it one more time for the user info table, bring it over, place it as well. So we have here two tables. And the way the box is structured, we need to explain what's going on here. There's actually two objects here. So the first object is the user info object that belongs to data set. And it has, it has all of our fields, ID, name, email address, and so on. We have our flight info object right? that has all of our flight info related columns for our table. 
And then you have here user info table adapter and flight info table adapter. The main difference between, let's say, user info and user info flight table adapter is that you can interpret as a user info holds our data. It's our data structure. The table adapter handles transmitting data to and from the real database. So all the methods that you need to, to, to retrieve data or to send data to the real database exists in table adapter. And we're going to learn how to use these, um, the methods that belong to these objects momentarily. So same idea with flight info. In older versions of Visual Studio, you actually had to right click and configure one extra setting that would prevent a crash. And that is in advanced options. And it, it's this generate, insert, update, and delete statements. Right? You could also op use optimistic concurrency, uh, refresh date. Like you can check off these other ones if you wanted to. We just, the most important one right now is generate, insert, update, and delete statements. So I'm going to hit cancel. I don't want any modifications made. But essentially, this is our data set. And we'll just hit Control S to save. The moment we hit Control S to save, it has auto-generated all of the classes, objects, fields, and so on for us to be able to write code for data set one. Until then, data set one is an empty object that really can't do anything. Now, another thing to note with this data set is that you know things happen. Sometimes you have to actually add another field to your database table. Right, let's say user info needed another field called meals, right, to check how many meals the person ordered or whether they ordered a meal or not. So maybe I'll have to go back into SQL Server, add that new column. Now, how do I bring that change into this data set? The first thing you have to do is just delete the table, right, and then you go to Server Explorer and you hit refresh, and then you have to redrag that same table back in, Control S to save. Actually, Control S to save is a common mistake people make. They drag the table in, they forget to save, they go back to their code, their code crashes, and they're like, what's going on when it was just a simple save? And then that's it. Then you have to go and edit your code to make sure that everything works properly. So that's the tip with editing a table or in a database after having a data set. So now that we have our data set, the next step is to actually go ahead and work on a new page. We're going to work on a new page that will transfer data to and from this database. So we're going to play with the user table this time as opposed to the flight table. So we're going to add a new web form. So we're going to say add and add new item and look for a web form. And it's called default2. We'll keep it as default2.aspx. Place code in a separate file. We'll leave it as that. Good enough. All right. And we'll switch to design mode. We'll do all of our work in design mode. So first step is to bring over a grid view. Let's focus on getting our data to display from the user table again. We did it in the earlier page, but we'll just do it here as well. And so in auto format, I'm going to use classic again. And because it's a, separate, it's a separate page, there's no data source from the earlier page. And if you recall from earlier discussions, once when, when the, the pages themselves are separate entities, and you can't really share data between the two. So maybe having a higher level class might be a better idea that you can retrieve from. That might be one option. Or uh, we're just going to re-add the data source again. So in this case, we'll just say new data source. And it'll be SQL database, SQL data source one, same connection string. And I'm using the user table this time. So user info. And before we go, we'll hit advanced. I want the insert, update, and delete statements checked off. And now we'll hit next. Test query, everything's there for me. There's a new column here, flight num, and the numbers, they're just numbers. So we're just getting raw numbers, like ID numbers from the flight table to connect them together. And we'll hit finish. And so we have here our data. Let's just, just verify that it actually works. I'm going to view in browser for this.
right, so we have all of our data here. ID number, name, email address, age, and flight num. In the flight table. So everything works. Let's now focus on inserting a new row. So to do that, we need to add in a few text fields and some buttons. So actually, first I'll just type out what it is that I want to add. So I have name, and I have email. I want to have address. I want to have age. And then I want to have flight. Now, the first four will be text fields. The last four we're going to draw from our other table. So let's first start by adding in our text boxes. I'm just going to copy and paste the other ones. So we'll name these text boxes accordingly. All right, so we're looking at TB name. TB email. TB address. and TB age. And from last the last lesson, or the earlier lesson on validation, we should be validating all of these text block input, inputs, but in, in the interest of time, we're not going to. But your next step should be to have validators attached to each of these text fields. Now for flight, we don't want to reinvent the wheel here. We're not going to have a text box for flight. We're going to have a drop-down menu in here. So we're going to connect the drop-down to the other table. So first thing you do in toolbox, look for a drop down menu, drop down list, sorry. And in the past we were using edit items to just manually add things to our drop downs. We had a post back involved because we wanted to refresh some information upon upon selecting the item from the drop down, but because we're, we don't care about that, we just want to retrieve raw data from the drop down, we're going to keep this unchecked. We're just going to go straight to choose data source. This time around, we're going to retrieve our data for the drop down from the database. And this, actually, I find the drop down to be a, little, a lot easier to work with. So choose data source. Data, SQL data source one retrieves the user stuff. I want the flight stuff, so I have to go new data source. And it'll be SQL database. So SQL data source 2, hit OK. I'm going to use the same connection string as before, hit Next. And this time I'm going to use flight info. And I'm not going to bother with advanced because I'm not editing the flight table. I just want to retrieve. So just simple select star from flight info. I'll hit Next, test query, everything's there, fantastic, hit Finish. Now, before we hit OK to wrap this up, let's look at the next two fields here. So this says, select a data field to display in the drop-down list. So what do I want my user to see? I think I'd like them to see flight num. So like AC799, for example. And then there's a data field for the value for the drop-down list. We'll leave that as ID. So those are all IDs we were saying. So that way, at least the IDs in, the, in that table will line up with what we need to see in the, in the user table. So knowing this, we'll just hit OK. And let's have a look. Before we continue, let's have a look at how that drop-down looks. So I'm going to right-click and say View in Browser. Look at Flight. All of our flights are there. And so now we can continue with adding. What I want to do here is below the drop down, I want to put two buttons in. Well, I guess we can just put it below the data source. 
So I'm going to add two buttons. And stretch it out. I'll copy and paste this right next to it. There. So two buttons, same length. The first button, the text will be add. Second button, text will be update. And the update, the ID for that will be btn update. And we'll have btn add as well. So we have add and update. Now we can create our event handlers for add and update. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Double click on add, creates btn add click. Double click on update, we have btn update click. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add the code for our add button so we can insert a new row. So we'll do that up here. And I'll full screen this. All right, so we're here in our C sharp file. The first thing I have to do is bring in a using statement so we can actually do some work here. So we're going to say using system.data. And then we have btn add click that we're going to do our work in. But before we do that, instead of repeating things over and over again, because we're going to do an update as well, let's actually declare a couple of things that, a couple of the main objects as class variables so that it's easier to work with instead of duplicating code. So we're going to say private data set one. DS1 equals new data set one. We have private data set one table adapters dot user table adapter. We'll call it TA user equals put on a new line there for readability. New and I like how it auto completes. Stick there, that should be an equal sign there. All right, now I'm going to add one more field. This is for down the road when we do an update. So we're going to say private static int, call it update ID, set it equal to zero. We're going to use this value later on. All right, so moving into the add click method. First thing to do is now that we have our data set object and our table adapter object, so to recap, the data set object, its purpose is to hold the data structure, so the actual physical data, and the table adapter's purpose is to have the methods to transfer data to and from the real database. So first step is we're going to go and retrieve the latest copy of the database table from the real database. So we'll say ta user dot fill for ds1 dot user info. That'll be our first step. The next step is, because we're inserting a new row, we should instantiate a new row object related to this. And the beauty of data set is that it automatically generates everything for us. So we're going to say data set one dot user info row. So it created a row, an object, a row object for us. Call it user row is equal to ds1.userinfo.new user info row. Now all I have to do is just populate this user row uh, variable with the text, uh, the information from our text boxes and our drop down. So I'm going to say user row dot name and look how it automatically creates the variables for us. So name based on the column names in our table, in our real table. So dot name is equal to tb name dot text. And we'll say user row dot address is equal to tb address dot text. We have user row dot email 
equal to TB email dot text. And then we have user row dot age is equal to TB age dot text. Now there's a little snag here because age is an int in the real database and it's catching that already. So it actually keeps track of the data type. So not everything is a text uh, or an NS string. So we have to convert tbh.txt to an int. So we'll say convert dot to int32 for tbh.txt. So knowing that, uh, there is one caveat here is that we have to actually check for bad input. And we have to do that. We really need a validator in that text box, or we have to do an if statement here, but it's better to do validation in that text box to make sure that letters aren't en entered. Otherwise, this is going to crash. So, But in the interest of time for this exercise, we're not going to. So we're just going to continue on and assume that user has entered correct information. Now, the last thing we'll add here is we'll say user row dot flight num is equal to DD flight dot selected value. Now, made a mistake because we when we dragged over the drop down list, we never renamed the drop down. So it's actually called drop down list one. I don't want to leave it as drop down list one, so I'm actually just gonna jump back for a moment and rename that. So I'm going back to default two to highlight my flight and Rename it to DD Flight. Save that. Switch back to the CS file. Now let's see what else it's complaining about. So here's the thing. We cannot again, same issue as the text above with the age. This is a this is text. This is an int. So the flight num column has to be converted to int as well. So convert dot to int 32 for dd flight dot selected value. And everything looks like it balances out. So now the next step is to just take this newly created row. What we're going to do is we're going to add it to our cache copy. So when we do a fill up here at the top, we're actually creating a cache copy on our local machine of the latest database table. So we're just going to update our latest copy of the database table on our local machine first. So we're going to say ds1.userinfo.rows.add for user row. So now our, our local copy has the the updated row or the new row that's been added in. Now, the trick is to, we need to get the the real database to update. So we have to say TA user, so TA user has the methods or capability to flush back to the real database, so we'll say dot update. We'll pass in ds1.userinfo. So at this point the transaction is complete. We have our data, and all that's left to do is to say grid view one dot data bind. All right, so let's see what, what happens when we run it. View and browser. So let's add Yoda in. It'll be Yoda at Yoda.com. We'll say, I don't know, three, four, two, three, four, Dago Bawei. His age will be, well, 900 years old. 
remember that line from Return of the Jedi. And we'll put him on Cathay Pacific. And we'll hit Add. And we have here Yoda and all of our new information newly added for this table. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the grid view here. And we're going to actually bring in a couple of columns again like we did before in the connected model for update and, and delete. This time we're going to actually bring in, we'll bring in delete again, but we'll bring in select this time. So to do that, we're going to switch back to default2.aspx. And we will, well, I'm actually going to add in paging, sorting. And if we look at it here, it says enable deleting, enable selection. So I could check off these checkboxes, or I can go to Edit Columns, and I could manually bring it in as well through the command field. Right? So I can do it here, I can do those checkboxes. So the difference is that here I have more control over where I want to put Select and Delete. So I'm going to bring in Select, hit Add. It'll put it at the bottom. I'll bring in Delete, Add. It'll put it at the bottom. This time I'll actually want to put Select and Delete at the, at, as the first two columns. So I'm going to move them up. All right, so select, delete, and then there's ID, name, email address, and age, and so on. So I have all my columns. Now I have a select and delete. I hit OK. And notice that select and delete are put here. Now, in terms of numbering of columns, because we're going to need to know the column numbers, this is going to be column 0. Delete will be column 1, ID will be column 2, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? So we need to know that later on we actually have to retrieve data from this grid view. All right. So knowing this, what we're going to do now is we're going to start first by retrieving data in select. So to do this, we're going to add, our, we're going to add a, an event handler to the grid view. So this grid, this uh, event handler, for that we'll have to highlight grid view, we'll have to hit on the, on the lightning bolt there on the properties window to see what different event handlers we have. And if we scroll up a little bit, we have row command. So if I double click on row command, it generates the method grid view one row command. And so we can treat this as a way to uh, auto execute or execute code, kind of like the button where we actually had the the BTN update click and we have the BTN add click. So row command serves the same purpose. So what we want to do is we want to retrieve the data that's in the row for the select and actually update or place that information in those text boxes. And so what we're going to do first is we'll look at the arguments here. We have sender, but the second argument is what we care about because it says grid view command event args e. So we care about the letter e. This, uh, this little e variable has all the information we need for uh, retrieving the, uh, the data from the row that was selected. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say if e dot command name is equal to select. So e dot command name is select, and what we're going to do is we're going to retrieve the row, and so we're going to say grid view row, call it row equals grid view one dot rows of, and we want the row number that was selected, that will be selected. So e dot command argument is the name of that of that row or has the num value of that row but we have to convert it to an int so to say convert dot to int 32 for e dot command argument right so that's the first thing first step is to retrieve the row now, a moment ago I said I, I mentioned row number or column numbers for the grid view because we need to know that for now. So select is column zero, delete is column one, 
the ID is column two. So first thing I want to do is retrieve that ID. So we have that variable update ID in the first column. We want to retrieve it. So it's actually in the row dot cells of two dot text. But the problem is that update ID is an int. This is text, so it's a string. So to convert it, dot two int 32 to row.cells.text. So I have my update ID. Now the next step is just retrieve all the information. So we'll say tb name dot text is equal to row dot cells of three dot text. tb email dot text is equal to row dot cells of four dot text. And you can verify by by having the uh, the grid view side by side just to verify the column numbers as well. tb address dot text is equal to row dot cells of five dot text. And then you have tb age dot text is equal to row dot cells of six dot text. Now the last one is the drop down. So DD flight. I want to set its selected value, not selected index, but selected value because that's what's being returned. Set that equal to row dot cells of seven dot text. And now let's give it a try. Let's give it a run and see what happens when we do the select. So let's see what happens when we hit select. So if I hit select for Han Solo, There we go. Han Solo, Han at Solo.com, 456 Falcon Way, age 38. He's on flight WS766, which if we hit the drop down, it's like the fourth one down, which kind of which lines up with flight num. So in essence, we're able to get our select going nicely. So let's do this. Let's take care of delete now. So we have the delete button there. And what we're going to do is go back to grid view one row, row command and down here we'll say if e dot command name is equal to delete and so we'll say now again first step retrieve the row that we're dealing with so grid view row Call it row is equal to grid view one dot rows of convert dot two int thirty two for e dot command argument. I'm going to say ta user dot fill. So now that we're going through the process of deleting a row, so in select, we just simply retrieved what was in the grid view. We didn't have any need to do any transaction, so no transaction code was written for a disconnected model. But in delete, we're actually going to go ahead and physically delete something here. So we need to run through the motions to delete a row. So first step is get the latest copy of the table from the database, so we do a fill. So we're going to fill for ds1.userInfo.
Now, what we need to do is retrieve a, the row in particular that we're dealing with that we want to delete from our cache copy. So we're going to say data row. It's an array. dr is equal to ds1 dot user info dot and there's this method called select. The beauty of the data set is that it, it, it actually auto generates this method called select. It's part of the base class of data set and so it's a very powerful method because it takes care of all the selecting for you. All you do inside the round brackets is put your where clause. So like where ID equals five or if you leave it empty it selects everything. So that's the beauty of it. It's a very powerful method. So we're going to say select and we're just going to provide our ID. So we're going to say where, without the word where, just say ID equals and then plus row dot cells of, and remember it was column two, dot text. Now some of you might think, well why don't we just use the update ID variable from earlier that we saved it to because and the reason is that because what if they didn't select uh, update and uh, do a select, right? So we'd have an empty update ID. So that's why we're using ID equals and then directly pulling it from the row of the grid. All right. So this line of code, so select again, very powerful method, does all the selection for us, and it returns it back as an array, right? That's why we have the array. It's actually a two D array because it uh, it's going to have the rows and then I'll have columns as well. And so because our IDs are unique, there will always be only one row. There should never be more than one row returned here. So we can actually just work with dr of zero, right? Now the powerful thing is with data set is that yes, there's select, it does the selection for us, but there's also a delete. So we'll say dr zero dot delete. So we can delete that row. Now that we've deleted the row from our current copy, our cache copy, we have to push that update back to the real server. So we're going to say ta user dot update for ds1 dot user info. And then last step, refresh that grid view. Grid view one dot data by. So now we have our delete in place. And I can go ahead and test that out now. So I'm going to save this and let's run. So I'll save view in browser. All right, I'm going to delete Yoda and let's hope he doesn't come back to haunt me. Yes, <laughs> delete it. So we know that delete works. So we're able to select, we're able to add, and we're able to delete. We need to finish this off with the update. That's the last step. So we're able to do add, select, and delete. Now the last step is, hey, we've selected this information. Let's update it. So to do that, we already created our event handler called btn update. Click. So let's finish that one off. So we have btn update click. So we did a select a moment ago, right? We retrieved everything inside select. We have our update ID. We have it saved because of the update that we're going to do in btn update click. We have name, email, address, age, and flight. We're now going to push our changes for these text fields and the drop down into the database. So we have update click. So to do that, First thing you have to do is retrieve the latest copy of the database. So we're going to say ta user dot fill for ds1 dot user info. So 
we get the latest copy of the database table. Now, we're going to also create, we're going to actually have another row. So we'll say data row. Again, it's an array. dr equals ds1.userInfo dot select again. So this powerful method select, and again, provide its where clause. So we'll say id equals, so where I, so we're going to say select star from user info where id equals, and we're going to pull it from update id this time. We saved update ID in the select method for in the select portion of grid view row command. So now we have update we have ID equals update ID. So we have our row. Again, it's one row that'll be returned because ID is just a unique variable that we should not have two ID rows. We should have two we should not have two IDs and therefore not two rows returned. So only one row. So dr of zero essentially what we're working with. So knowing that we have one row return, we're going to say dr of zero. And I said earlier that this is a 2D array, right? So a two-dimensional array. So we're only dealing with row zero. So we'll start by populating all the fields. So we're going to say dr zero of name is equal to tb name dot text. Then we'll say dr zero of email is equal to tb email dot text dr zero of address is equal to tb address dot text dr zero of h is equal to tb h dot text And finally, dr0 of flight num is equal to dd flight dot selected value. So now that we have our updated information in our local copy of the table, it's time to flush it back to the real server. So we'll say ta user dot update for ds1 dot user info and we'll say grid view one dot data bind and now it's time to run it and make sure that our update actually works all right so we'll take this away we'll save it and we'll view in browser. And we'll take Han Solo, select him, I'll just add an O to each of his say actually well, except for that say 39 and changes flight to AC 799 hit update and you see that his information is updated and I'll just undo that as well change him back to the WestJet flight and there and so essentially that's the data the data set the disconnected model. So we learned in this ex we learned in this exercise how to create a data set object, how to connect to a server, how to pull tables from a data set and, and and from a server and put into our data set. We learned that data set auto generates a lot of stuff for us, so it saves a lot of headache. Now, some would argue now some would argue that you know there's uh, you've got this fantastic feature with data set. It's so easy to code with. It, it does everything for you. What's the catch? Well, unfortunately, there is a catch, and that's in performance. So SQL connection with the disconnected model is faster, is a lot faster to work with from, from uh, research that, that we've looked at. The disconnected model is slower. It's bulkier. It, uh, it does come with a cost. So you don't want to do too many transactions on the disconnected model, especially for a, a production-grade product. And so, 
And so essentially, you have to choose with, you have to dictate performance as well when you're choosing between SQL connection and the connected model versus disconnected model and see where you can use one or the other. So we learned about the data set. We learned how to create a web form that connects to our data set object. We learned how to add select and delete uh, columns to, to our grid view and then have select populate our text fields. We learned how to add into a data set. We learned how to update a data set and we learned how to delete from a data set. So essentially that's the, the disconnected model. 